Mr. Speaker. We subsidize in pharmaceutical products massively. The health services in this country are basically free. Mr. Speaker, the education revolution is a poverty reduction measure. Disaster preparedness is a poverty reduction measure. Climate change adaptation and mitigation is a poverty reduction measure. Mr. Speaker, you know the last election, the NDP did not put the word climate change in their manifesto. And in 2017, I was very shocked. The record shows it's at the OECS Assembly. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition, the Honorable Lauren Friday, said he's listening to the debate that he realized this thing about climate change, how serious it is. Before that, they took geography lessons from the Honorable Member for South Leeward as the, the authority on climate change. Uh, and the Honorable Leader of the Opposition is say, we're hey, going on with rain from our Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Prime Minister, I know you're waxing lyrical, but don't misrepresent what happened at the OECS Assembly, okay? You mean, that's not what happened. You know that. We all agreed it was a serious matter. You know? And you don't go there and say that somehow there was an epiphany on my part and that you have known it since the time of Columbus. This is not something that is accurate in the representation. And the Honorable um, Minister of Finance, he was there. He knows. He's probably more honest in his re-election. Well, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I remember it with such clarity. That what I will do, I will get transcript. I'm going to an OECS meeting in on the 14th in St. Kitts, and I'm going to request. I'm going to. I'm going to request, and it's going to come here. You did, in fact, have an epiphany. Either to that, you are so asso associating yourself, if not with climate deniers, those who neutrally would lead us to an apocalypse. Nonsense. But you said so, in fact, even in your speech of four hours, even in your speech of four hours, you just glanced it. You glanced it. You glanced it. Climate, climate change at a glance. Climate change at a glance. <laughs> it's all right. We will. We will. We will see. We will see. We, we will see as we go along. Let's get. Let's 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 get back. Let's get back, please. The housing revolution is a poverty reduction measure. Green economy is a poverty reduction measure. Inequality and poverty, when they are addressed in a targeted manner, poverty reduction measures. Monetary, financial, and macroeconomic stability, including low to moderate inflation, is a poverty reduction measure. Strengthening citizen security and good governance are poverty reduction measures. Sound regionalism and an appropriate foreign policy are poverty, are, are, are poverty reduction measures. Mr. Speaker, since I been in politics over 50 years ago, political activist. Mr. Speaker, I have had to suffer the slings and arrows of misfortune. I got arrested, I got beaten, I got tear gassed. I got tear gassed and beaten in Jamaica as a 22-year-old leading a massive protest. The because of my outspokenness and my writing, I'm per, I was persona non grata. In 1979, I came home here from teaching at university. Couldn't go back to work. Had a young wife and son. How I mind them for my beliefs, for my outspokenness. And all those times, Mr. Speaker, I felt hurt. But I would say 
one of the most hurtful experiences I had in my life is when I discovered in 2001 when I came to office that the NDP government in 1999 had applied to the British government for debt relief of $12 million under the Commonwealth Debt Initiative. And the British, a colonial government, which carried out native genocide and African, the enslavement of Africans, which built two schools, only secondary school in 200 years of colonialism, one for boys and one for girls, one for each year, one for each 100 years of colonialism. And the British High Commission to the Barbados came to see me. He said, you know, Prime Minister, we had refused this thing. This is April 2001. I look into the files. There was not a copy there. He gave me a copy. I then put it on the files. The British told an independent government, the NDP government, that we will not give you debt relief. And they, they gave four reasons. First, you did not have a focused approach to poverty reduction. Could you imagine that? Secondly, that you are not addressing properly or at all official corruption. Could you imagine that? Thirdly, that you had a limited, highly inadequate regulation of the international offshore finance sector. And fourthly, that you're not addressing efficaciously money laundering. Could you imagine that? When the gentleman gave me the letter, Mr. Speaker, I read it and I sat in the chair. And I told him that I feel hurt and embarrassed. I didn't do anything, you know, but as a Vincentian, not like I didn't have any reason to be proud. Like how the Honorable Leader of the Opposition on Sunday afternoon at about 4 o'clock on June the 9th, after we were elected to the Security Council by midday, before midday on June the 7th, and the thing was followed all over the world, followed here live. It took him two days. Say that he and the end, like everybody else in St. Vincent, proud. When Mike Finley made West Indies cricket team, I get proud one time. When Keswick Williams made the T20 side, I proud one time. When Kioka Krukank won the Digicel competition, the singing competition, I proud, I proud one time. You take two days to be proud? Eh? Two days? That's not pride, man. That's like shamefacedness. You can't help it. You do it. Well, he tried to stop the airport opening the week before. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. But I was ashamed. I felt humiliated. The Honorable Member for North Windward, Minister of Lands, I thought about Chateauguay. I thought about him at the moment of his death at Dorset Hill. That the descendants of the British told the government of an independent country. No, you're not, you're not addressing poverty. You're not doing it. I mean, as, as the first them, um, as, as the guys do, do, doing the DJ music, you will and come again. Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, later that year in August, after I applied, we had taken some measures just in a few months. They gave us debt relief first for a year, 
And then the next year, they give us the whole thing. The whole thing. Mr. Speaker, we established the Zero Hunger Trust Fund. When we came here with the bill, the opposition said, why do you need another poverty fund? I said, there is an, an intractable element of poverty. And I was concerned, Mr. Speaker, that after the years, the hard years from 2008 and 2014, that we might have slipped a little. I say I have to do something specific. And Zero Hunger is doing a magnificent job. I want to show you the difference. They criticize it. They say we're going with it. I don't like to talk about what I do. Every year, Mr. Speaker, since the Zero Hunger is established, I give one month's salary to the Zero Hunger Fund. Mr. Speaker, the account was opened by about $10 or something like that. And then the first donation, 9000 and something dollars after tax. That's my monthly salary. I paid it to the Zero Hunger Trust Fund. Oh, you can, you can say, you can say all what you want about Ralph. The people know that I apply my heart to wisdom and I'm with them and I have the profoundest love for them. And Mr. Speaker, all my life I have considered the poor and that is why I get blessings from Almighty God. And when you tell me that is 20 wasted years. I take it personal. That's why you see. I mean, Mr. Speaker, he riled me up. You know, he, you know the, the, the point about it is this. The, all of us would like, you know, it's, it's good, Mr. Speaker, if you if you are, in a sense, a, a giant. Everybody, it is excellent. As Shakespeare said, to have a, a, a giant's strength. Excellent to have a, a giant's strength. However, what you have over there, you have some people over there who... Believe they have a giant strength and want not want to use it with humility, but want to use it with arrogance and in a tyrannous way. Beautiful old word, tyrannous. Some people may say tyrannical. Poetic word, tyrannous. To use it like a giant. No, I use it like a servant. But well, I'm a servant of the people.